Humans are relentless imitators. It's something that comes naturally to us. Well, most of us. Gabe is a 10-year-old Californian boy, and he's autistic. So my mom took me to a, a hospital, and they said that I have Asperger. Part of it um, um, is about, um, I do very good well in stuff like math. Um, but the other part is a type of, of a disability. Asperger's syndrome is a relatively mild form of autism. But even so, Gabe finds it hard to cope with normal social situations. He doesn't seem to learn all the things that his peers learn just by being around each other. Just taking turns in a conversation, even playing, he just doesn't seem to get sometimes I think the level of joy that other kids get out of uh, playing with each other he, pr he, he definitely prefers to play alone autism is a deeply obscure disorder damage to almost every part of the brain has at one time or another been implicated as a cause. A new idea, and I think it's quite a good one, is that it has something to do with things called mirror neurons. Gabe, I'm going to put on the cap, okay? Here we go. I feel just like a baseball cap on you here. All right, looking good. The University of California, San Diego. Gabe has come here to have his brain waves analyzed. I don't have Asperger's, but I'm wired up too. Just keep opening and closing your hand until I tell you to stop. We start with a simple gesture. It's just a test of hand-eye coordination, one to which autists and non-autists have much the same neural response. But the interesting bit comes when we are asked to watch a video of the same action. Where for most people, doing and watching an action produce very similar brain waves, not so for Gabe. There's something wrong with his neural wiring. And rather amazingly, given the complexities of the brain, we may know just which neurons have gone wrong. They're called mirror neurons. Discovered only in the last decade, they are the neurons that fire whenever we watch or imitate an action. For you to imitate somebody, you have to adopt that person's vantage point. And enact the same scenario in your own brain. In other words, create a virtual reality environment of the other person's actions, even complicated actions, in your brain before you can execute them. In an autistic child, if you ask them to imitate somebody else's action, they have great difficulty because they're unable to put themselves in the other person's shoes. In other words, there was no mirror neuron activity. So we said maybe the key deficit in autistic children, the neural basis of autism, is a deficit in the mirror neuron system. The idea that mirror neurons may explain the workings of the autistic mind is an exciting one. But what about the rest of us who are not autistic? What do mirror neurons do for us? We use them whenever we copy other people. In effect, they allow us to blur the distinction between doing and watching. So when Californian cheerleaders practice a new routine, they rely on their mirror neurons being in perfect working order. Natalie's mirror neurons are firing in response to Anishay's, and Anishay's are firing in response to Natalie's. Kim's mirror neurons are firing too, and so are Tenny's. 
But what's really remarkable is that I'm just watching and my mirror neurons are firing too. Mirror neurons will do for psychology what DNA did for biology. Open up a whole host of different questions and approaches to these questions that have remained to the province of philosophy for thousands of years. Such as how do you emulate, what is imitation, questions of that nature which have remained very elusive. Nowhere is the human capacity for imitation more obvious than when we talk. When we pick up an accent, acquire a dialect, or even learn a new language, we do so by copying people around us. It's something we're really rather good at, especially when we're young. But is our ability to talk really so unique? Meet Alex, one of the great linguists of the animal world. You're a very good boy. You're right. What matter? What matter? What matter? Sure. That's right. This is paper. What matter is this? Alex is an African grey parrot who lives at Boston's Brandeis University. Whoa. Good boy. Whoa. Good parrot. Okay. A little bit harder? For nearly 30 years, he has been studied and trained by animal researcher Irene Pepperberg. Can you tell me what color? Like all parrots, Alex has a vocal system capable of producing human-like words. Green. Tell me what color is seven? What color is seven? He's also a natural mimic. Tell me what color. Every word he utters, he's copied from Irene. What color? But what makes Alex so fascinating is that he can do more than just imitate. He seems to understand what words mean, even rather abstract ones, such as color and number. How many key? Two. Good parrot, good boy. Alex, what's different? What's different? Color. Good boy. Good parrot. Very good. I'll tell you what, Want instead of nuts. a nut, how about a little bit of bread? How does this compare to a, a human child? When does a human child acquire these concepts? Um, some of this is about probably just three years old. Okay, right. the labeling is pretty simple. Concepts of number a little bit older. Um, we've got a number test here. Um, this is, we we're talking about maybe a four or five year old child. Okay, Alex, can you look at the tray and tell me how many green wool? Can you tell me how many green wool? How many green wool? Come on, tell me, how many green wool? How many green wool? Then we'll go on to something more fun. How many green wool? Come on, Alex. You take the tray. Shall I take it? Him. Yes. All right, Alex. Irina's gone away and it's just the two of us. And you have to answer some questions. How many green wool? How many green wool? How many green wool? Okay, Alex, focus on the tray. Four. Good boy. Four. Four. Alex, that's brilliant. It took about 15 minutes, but you certainly got it. Alex is clearly a remarkable animal, all the more so because his brain is the size of a walnut. He undoubtedly has some of the basic components of language, phonetics and symbolic association, but this is still far short of human language. For all his linguistic prowess, Alex can't do something that comes easily to any three-year-old child. Three. He can't form a sentence. What color three? What color? Alex. A human language, any human language, has structure. It has nouns and verbs, adjectives and prepositions, and rules for how they are used to make meaningful sentences. These rules are called syntax, and using them, the number of things we can say 
is literally infinite. 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 Infinite